one of the things psychologists have done for the last 20 years, especially the social psychologists, is push this idea of self-esteem. You should feel good about yourself. And I think, why would you tell someone 20 that? It's like, you should feel good about who you are. It's like, no, you shouldn't. Why should you feel good about who you are? It's like, you should feel good about who you could be. That's way better because you've got 60 years to turn into who you but, could be. But wait be. a minute. Are you uh, what your accomplishments are or are you this individual going through this journey? I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with feeling good about who you are if, as long as it's tempered by an understanding of potential and of what you have accomplished versus what you can accomplish. Well, I think... I but think, having confidence well, is a big part I, it of... Is, it is. It is. And I'm not saying that people shouldn't have confidence. But like often you take young people, say they're 16 to 22, and they're not really feeling that good about who they are. Right. Because their life is chaotic and in disorder and they don't know where they're going and they don't know which way is up. Look, also, there could be bad parenting. Oh, God, uh, yes. Bullying. Yeah. Oh, yes. There could be a lot of abuse going on. <laughs> On. And yeah, I think yeah. that's one of the reasons why pe that resonates with people, this idea of be happy for you, about who you are. Right. Feel good about who you right. are. Right. But, but the thing is, it, it has to be stated with precision. It's like, yes. it's like you, should, you should treat yourself as if you're valuable, especially in yes. potential. But you should concentrate on who you should become, especially if you're young. And so let's say you're miserable and nihilistic and chaotic and depressed and all of that now, and you have your reasons, you know terrible parenting, abuse, all of those things. It's like, well, you should feel good about yourself. It's like, no, no, it's, it's, not, it's not the right message. Is that it's more like you should understand how much potential there is within you to set that straight. And then you should do everything you can to manifest that in the world and it will set it straight. And that's better than self-esteem. It's like, you're, you're in a crooked, horrible position. Okay, fine. There's a lot of suffering and pain associated with that. Yeah. You can't just feel good about that because it's not good, but you can do something about it. You can genuinely do something about it. And I think all the evidence suggests that that's the case. Yes. So I'm telling, telling young people, look, there's no matter how bad your situation is, I'm not going to pretend it's okay. It's not okay. It's tragic, tainted with malevolence. And some people really get hurt by malevolent people, like, you know, terribly hurt. Sometimes they never recover. It's really awful. But there's more to you than you think. And if you stand up and face it with, with a positive, with a, with a noble vision, with discipline and intent, you can go far farther to overcoming it than you can imagine. And that's the principle upon which you should predicate your behavior. And I think that one of the things that's really nice about being a clinical psychologist is that this isn't just guesswork. Like one of the things, we know two things in clinical psychology. One is truthful conversations redeem people. Because if you come to a clinical psychologist whose worth is salt, you have a truthful conversation. The conversation is, well, here's what's wrong with my life. And here's what caused it. You know, maybe it takes a year to have that conversation. And both of the participants are doing everything they can to lay it out properly. Here's how it might be fixed. Here's what a, a beneficial future might look like. And so it's a completely honest conversation if it's working well. And all that's happening in the conversation is that the two people involved are trying to make things better. That's the goal. Let's see if we can have a conversation that will make things better. Okay, so we know that works. It does make things better. And then another thing we know is that, well, let's say there's a bunch of things that you're afraid of that are in your way. So you have some vision about who you want to be. Maybe you have to, you know, you want to be successful in your career. So you have to learn to talk in front of a group. It's like, okay, well, you're afraid of that. It's like, no wonder you don't want to be humiliated. So, okay, so what do we do about that? Well, maybe we first get you to speak in front of one person and then three people, you know, for five minutes and then for 10 minutes, like graduated exposure to what you're afraid of. Voluntary graduated exposure to what you're afraid of is curative. And that's true. It works. The documentation is in. It's how people learn. So, so to, to, to tell people that if you confront the world forthrightly, if you speak the truth and you expose yourself courageously to those things that you're afraid of, that your life will improve and so will the life of people around you. Like, as far as I'm concerned, that's as close to undeniable fact as we've, as we've got. And it also dovetails nicely with the underlying archetypal stories, the heroic stories. It's like, go out there, find the dragon, confront it. It's a dragon. It might eat you. It's dangerous. But it's worse to cower at home and wait for it to come and devour you. Go out there, confront it, get the gold. Share it with the community. It's like, yeah, it's the oldest story of mankind.